Uh, I'd been getting bruises for a little while, but um, as I was attending to my sick husband, I thought, oh, well, I'll sort that out afterwards. And then I was at the hospital visiting him and I got a, um, a lump behind my knee, my left knee, and a big bruise. And I thought, oh, maybe it's just from sitting in different chairs at the hospital. So I asked a nurse and she said, oh, you need to go to a doctor straight away. So even though I was at the hospital, I arranged an appointment for a local doctor um, near the PA. So I went there and I told him all the symptoms after he asked a few questions. And he must have seen it before because you need to ask for a specific blood test. And he asked for the blood test. And then I had to go and have um, an ultrasound done of my knee. And then when I got um, the results um, a, a day or two days afterwards, I got a phone call from that doctor to say I had to present to emergency immediately. And I said, but my doctor said that it was all okay. He said, well, you can you can have a stroke at any minute. So it was all pretty serious from there. Well, I went straight down to emergency and they had all of my records there waiting and um, the nerves kicked in. I needed to go to the toilet and I actually passed two blood clots the size of my um, the palm of my hand. Um, I was on a bed before you could even breathe um, and they did all sorts of tests and um, then it was decided, I'm pretty sure, from then. Um, and after a couple of days, I was transferred to the Royal Brisbane Hospital because that's where all the experts are that treat haemophilia. It's the only place that it can be treated. Uh, I had to have a blood test and um, the blood test um, showed that I had haemophilia. I had no idea of it whatsoever. Um, I didn't know what the symptoms were. I was a very healthy person, um, never get sick, very rarely go to the doctor, um, nothing in the family. So to be told that I had that and everything that went with it, it was pretty scary. They were perfect. They knew everything about haemophilia. Um, I couldn't um, have a higher regard for the staff. Um, I was treated by um, um, Dr. Mason and whenever they came to visit, all of the haemophilia team came um, to check on my, my progress. Um, scared the out of me and um, and my family um, and just made me very wary and aware of um, everything going on. But um, I will say that um, after after arriving at the Royal Brisbane Hospital, um, the second night I was in there, I got this horrific pain. Um, it felt like somebody was pulling my stomach from the front to the back and then rolling it to the side. It was excruciating and um, everybody was around and, and I was rushed down to have all sorts of x-rays and tests and everything done. And apparently it was um, uh, a torn muscle um, in my kidney region and this can happen with haemophilia it's nothing that I did um, and and then it was sort of having to treat for that as well as for the haemophilia. I was in hospital um, overall for just under a month. Um, I was on um, I was on some very, very strong, expensive um, medication. Um, I'm not quite sure what it was called, but um, after I had this tear in my kidney, in my kidney area, 
the very next night, the same thing happened again, exactly the same thing. So it was, I thought I was gone. Um, and then I had to just be on my back for a week. And then they were giving me the medication. And the reason that I got the haemophilia was that the factor eight in my um, blood, um, my body was rejecting the factor eight. So the medication I was getting was factor seven. And so that was tricking my body into re-accepting factor eight. And um, once that started to take effect, then the treatment could sort of start to work better. I think I was in um, a bit of a state of disbelief. Um, I didn't realise it was um, happening. I didn't realise how serious it was at the time. Um, uh, but I would just say that um, if anybody is listening to this, um, listen to your body, act, act on any type of warning signs or anything different. Um, I was also told that um, I would have a very, very low um, immune system. And as this sort of happened in the middle of COVID in 2020, um, so I was released from hospital and I caught a cold, which turned into rhinovirus, which turned into a very rare form of pneumonia. Um, that's because my immune system was so low. So not only did I then have the haemophilia, I had um, a very bad reaction to the medication they were giving me. So I was having to be um, closely watched um, for my liver as well. I would like to say that um, I am in total remission. Um, I've been told that my condition is better than normal. Um, I believe that um, the drugs and the treatment were a trial and it has helped other people um, that have um, been diagnosed with haemophilia. It's acquired haemophilia and it happens to one in 1.5 million people and pick me, I was that one. <laughs> and the whole way through, apart from the bruising and that bleeding, I did not feel sick at all. You would not have known that there was anything wrong. No, I'm still on the books and I have, um, it was, I was having checks once a month. I'm now on to six monthly checks. I'll probably be on the books until next year. Um, the three-year period is the um, danger period for it to recur. Um, the chances of it recurring for me are less than 5%. So um, I've been a very good success story. I'm feeling absolutely fabulous now um, and I cannot give enough praise for all of the staff um, and the haemophilia team. <laughs>